awesome. This is Frankie the Answer Edson. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Divine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Everybody and welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920, live from the Ainsworth Lounge at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. My name is Billy Mira. You're here with Phil Devine and Joey Vonner. Tonight is a very, very special show on the MMA Fight Corner as we cover the World MMA Awards here at the Hard Rock. And if you want to watch the live stream, go to MMAFightCorner.com. Uh, Victor Kui, president of 1FC, who is nominated for promoter and promotion of the year, if I'm not mistaken, will be joining us, as well as UFC heavyweight Pat Barry, who's going to be joining us as well as with, with his girlfriend and Victor FC strawweight, Rose Nomanjunas. Did I say that properly, Phil? I believe you did. And uh, also, as well as former WEC bantamweight Chad George, who has a really cool documentary that came out like a month ago called Occupation Fighter. I just watched it uh, last night on Netflix, and it's it's a pretty pretty good pretty good watch. It's great to be back here at the Hard Rock in the Ainsworth. It looks awesome in here. A lot of changes since we've been here last time. They put up some chandeliers. Right? They prettied up the place for They us. prettied up the place. They have a great staff here. If you want to come down and join us here at the Hard Rock before the MMA Awards, I suggest everybody come down. We're going to have world-class fighters joining us, all the all the biggest stars, especially Joey Vaughn, who's sitting right here next well, wait, to me. Wait, I understand Billy's got an open tab for anyone who comes down. <laughs> there, <laughs> there is an open tab. For Billy Mira. <laughs> Billy Mira's open tab. And we have a little VIP section that's squared off for us as well. So if you want to come down and be a part of it, and if you're pretty, you get in all that much faster. And and it's not just a VIP section, you know. These are couches. These are leather couches right here, man. This is com- Victor. Are you comfortable? I'm comfortable. These are legit comfortable couches right now. Yeah, right yeah. Now. It's like we're kicking it out of club. You know, you know, Victor. I Victor, can't, I can't believe you rolled this out for me. I'm so impressed. I was you. gonna say, Victor, we knew you were coming. We knew we had to get the plush couches. So <laughs> they used to have the metal folding chairs in here. We said, nah. Yeah. Victor, get come on, get that, get that out of here. Bring us some leather couches. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna check out the toilet and see what you guys have done up there. There's Billy, gold, clean, gold Billy cleaned it with his own toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> they did, like as if they're in the military. So, yeah, a lot of interesting, great things happening here. So, like I said, if you're in the area, if you're not in the area, drive down because we're gonna be live here, possibly even after the broadcast, because that's that's how many people may join us. You never know who may walk in. You never know. That's right. I have to tell you, it's definitely it's a great night being here for the MMA Awards. But one of the things that's it's actually also a somber night too. With the, I just saw the weigh-ins for the final Strike Force card ever. I have to say, I was a little disappointed in this. The the, uh, uh, the, the I gotta tell you, man, your sound is awesome. My sound sounds like yeah, we sound muddled, <laughs> and he sounds nice and clear. They know the they one. know what they're doing in the studio, <laughs> and yeah, he's the he one talking felt. about disappointment. Yeah, yeah. He's bringing the gloom to the party. We're bringing sunshine. He's bringing rain, and he's got the clear. The this, clear the, but sound. it doesn't make you sad at all about the fact that Strike Force is over tomorrow. Tomorrow's our last Strike Force card no, ever. No, I'll be more sad. Like I was more sad about the last WEC, the last Pride. But I, I don't know. Strike Force just it came. It didn't have that lasting. You know, it kind of came on the scene, and once UFC bought it, we knew it was the beginning of the end. Turn Joey up. Turn Joey up. Yeah, turn Joey up. <laughs> and we have our producer back in the seat. So we're right, Joey. We need we need more. We're doing this on the fly tonight. This is why this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to see what's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> so we need to tell our engineer here, Almana just said in the studio, you got to turn us up. I think we should turn Phil down. No, no, no. Oh, there we go. Just so mute you were that magic over there. Look at that. I sound, I sound good now. But Phil, you know what?
Absolutely. He talked about the nerves, too, go, leading into it. That that's a lot of pressure. You know, the fact that this is his last fight in Strikeforce. He just signed a contract with the UFC. He's got a lot of expectations going in. And he's facing a guy that a lot of people don't even know. At heavyweight, Deion Starring is like the number 108th ranked light heavyweight. So he's not even fighting a legit heavyweight. This is a, right. lot of, a lot of bad things could happen. I don't think they will. But this is the sport of MMA, so you never know. You ne that should be the theme of this show. You never know. See, like, you, like we bring up you never know. Like, just I have some fond strike force memories. And you remember Scott Smith against Kung Lee. That, like, remarkable come-from-behind victory out of nowhere. And, or the bad parts, that awful... Nashville brawl that was on CBS that pretty much Gentlemen, got, we're on national got it TV. Off. We're on. Remember Gus? Too. These things happen in MMA. <laughs> yeah. That that guy should have never been calling. Victor, what are your thoughts on the final strike for show? You know, I agree with you. I, I, I think that when Pride, with the last Pride, when I, I, I felt my heart break. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, that, and it's probably a little bit closer to me because of my Asian roots. But it's still, no matter what, I hate to see. Um, other promotions go down because all I want for the sport is to see everybody succeed. I really believe we're nowhere near what the sport is going to be in the right. world, right? And this pie can grow exponentially. And uh, I mean, UFC taking them over—that obviously that's that's a part of business, and those are changes, and people make other business decisions, and that will continue to happen. That's part of the game. But uh, as, you know, you want to see fighters move on in the career and get good opportunities. I got mixed feelings on this last card, actually. Now, you, know? that you brought up the UFC, and let me just let me uh, let me just look into the future with you here. Um, UFC, of course, you guys right now are the premier mixed martial, martial arts event in all of Asia, um, and the UFC is, is making it known that they're going into Asia. They're trying to take it over. Have you looked in the future and seen where your paths could cross with UFC, and eventually, you know, looking at the history of MMA and what's going on in the states? I mean, at what point do they come looking for you? Want to buy one up as well? Sure. Let me show you my magic ball right here. <laughs> <laughs> the ball, I got it along. Throw it at me. Yeah. And, and well, the fact is, UFC saying that they're going to come to Asia is not new information. When I started the company, when I started One FC, that was already on the radar. That was already the plan. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, you are looking to come to Asia. Economies around the world are crashing. Asia is the only place the World Bank is saying double digit growths go to China, go to Malaysia, go to Indonesia. That's, you know, so that's not a surprise. But. We're based in Asia. I've been doing business there for over seven years, and turning around world-class events from country to country to country is what we do. My team turn it around like this. You know, I'm done planning for. We're January. I'm done planning for 2013. We're working on our 24 events wow. we got for 2014. Wow. So we're we're focused on what we need to do. We're focused on our plans, and we'll continue to do what that is. And when UFC comes, I think the pile will continue to grow. They'll continue to, to see world-class athletes. The athletes and the talent that we have in Asia, there's still a big gap. I mean, you're talking about MMA that's been here for over 20 years, right? So there's people have got to experience both of those things. Well, talk about it. You have a, a new event coming this, uh, I think it's February 2nd of this year. You have uh, a different event than normal. This is a, a tournament, uh, a lightweight, tor was it a lightweight or bantamweight tournament? Featherweight. Fe oh, featherweight tournament, which is even better because I, I love watching the little guys fight. They're always the best to watch. But and you have a little guy yourself. I was you say, little, yeah, yeah, you know, guy. we represent. We got to represent. Back each other up. But it's uh, usually on your cards. You have the big, big name guys. There's, there's, you know, established stars. But this is a little differently. You're trying to breed, breed the new crop in this event. Yeah, you know, North America is. We've been spoiled here for superstars because you, you every weekend you can see a packed out stadium in some sport, whether it's baseball, football, basketball, doesn't matter what it is. In Asia, you cannot go to a stadium for a stadium experience. That's one thing, and that's one thing that one of C delivers because there just there isn't that kind of sport culture there yet across Asia in general. But the other thing is that there is no superstars that are Asian that are out of Asia. If you are Malaysian and you want to see uh, somebody you can admire on a world stage, there isn't. If you're Singaporean, if you're Indonesian, if you're Vietnamese, Thai, there, there's not. And that's what one of C delivers. So the whole plan is, okay, in each one of our cards, we'll start to develop national champions. Like in this February 2nd card with a uh, four-man tournament, we've taken the best of Malaysia already. And out of that, we'll, be, we'll crown a 1FC Malaysian national champion. We will do that in every country that we go to, in every weight class as it gets deeper and deeper. So that you'll start to have these national champions that are going to meet up with each other. And, 
you know, people forget in, in Asia, we're talking about where our broadcast is 500 million viewers, 28 countries. We have 2 billion people on one time zone. Wow. One time zone, 2 billion people. You know, this year our broadcast is going to hit a billion households. It's like the scalability of what we're doing is incredible. But also, each country is so different. And the rivalries are so different. Singapore is nothing like Malaysia. Malaysia is nothing like Japan. Japan's nothing like Korea. And you put those two people together, man, it is war. You know, you got pr national pride on, on the line here. It was like UFC the other, just a few weeks ago when you had Kane against Brazil. And Mexico. I mean, I, I thought there was going to be a, with the beginning of that fight, when those two fighters were making their entrance, I thought we were going to have a full-on riot, no matter who won. Mm -hmm. I was getting, I got nervous. <laughs> that, that's actually one of the things that gets me most excited to see, and as you put it perfectly, the exponential growth of mixed martial arts. Because as you become developed in each individual country, there are rivalries that exist, you know, and it's almost going to be like the soccer, nationalistic, nationalistic pride, where it's like one country has a rival with another country, and their two fighters represent that country and, and they go to war and it's yeah. it's awesome and well and the cultural pride goes even deeper than that because you think about okay asia's been the home of martial arts for the last five thousand years every country has deep rooted in its pride some form of martial arts so if you take a muay thai world champion who's transitioned into mma and he's up against a chinese santa champion man there is a lot at stake you know and and that's what we're doing we're, we're taking fighters for example in malaysia Silat is the national sport there. Silat is a lot like Sanda. It's a combination par primarily striking, but they've got some throws, you know? So they have a little bit of a smoother transition into MMA. But we're taking a national champion, a national hero there, and he's on our card. Now, that's three million practitioners that are above 18 years old that do Silat, that worship this guy, you know? And you take him, and he's up against, uh, if you put him up against another Indonesian, uh, you know, this, it's guaranteed fireworks. Yeah, national pride. Now, how has, especially in China, how has MMA been received? I mean, because China's always been known as the birthplace of martial arts. And, and right now, you know, you've got uh, not uh, the Gung Fu, but uh, what are they? Uh, it's not Sancho. What's the, the acrobatic uh, take on Wushu? Wushu. Yeah. Wushu's a yeah. big, huge national sport. Um, you also have an amazing amateur wrestling program and an amazing amateur boxing program, which it seems like all those elements would make for the perfect atmosphere for, for mixed martial arts to breed, but they're kind of segmented. They're, they're still separate. So how is it received, and, and what steps have to, have to happen for it to grow? You know, it, it's very different on a country-by-country country basis, really, um, because some have developed martial arts to a different level. China does everything at a gigantic level. You know, when you talk about uh, Wushu or Sanda schools, you're talking about an institution of 50,000 students. Wow. You know, like, it's, it, the numbers are at a different level. Um, but the, the greatest challenge in Asia right now is educating the public that this is a professional sport of the highest degree. You're talking about professional athletes that have dedicated their life not just to one discipline. You're not just a Taekwondo guy, but you've taken the time to do um, you know, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Kung Fu, Muay Thai, and, and boxing, and an all-round athlete. And that concept is still foreign in Asia because it's a single disciplinary you know, martial art. And if you're, imagine if you're a Muay Thai fighter, a Thai guy who's been training Muay Thai since you were five years old and your great-grandfather taught you and your father taught you and you did that every day for fun, and then now you turn 22 years old and you've had 250 Muay Thai fights under your belt and somebody tells you, lay on your back and start learning some grappling. And you've, your whole life you've been taught never to get down on your back. Right. Fish out of water. It is, it is like the, the psychological ba barrier is very, very difficult. So on a country by country, it's, it's, it's different. But it's almost coming full circle because it wasn't always like that. I actually I, I saw these manuscripts, someone posted them on one of the forums, and they were from the, the early to mid-1800s. And it was old kung fu manuscripts. They were wearing the, the geese, you know, the, the silk geese with the lace up. You know, it wasn't a karate uniform. It was a kung fu uniform. And they were doing takedowns to arm bars, to, to neon belly stuff. I mean, there was grappling, pure grappling embedded in the art. And it seemed like through the changing of rules for fighting and then also...
our event, we get the entire martial arts community coming around us because they also aspire to be on that stage and they, they can see that we're not, you know, focusing or, or, or favoring one particular martial art. So in that way, it does unify it and it makes it easier. I think what's exciting to me is that, you know, in sports, there's two major gaps that are really, really hard to overcome to, to take a sport global, like the challenges that Major League Baseball have or NFL has. And the first challenge uh, is the language barrier. It is very, very difficult, for example, to follow baseball if you don't understand stats. If you, if you, can't, if you turn off the volume on a baseball game, it is nonsensical, right? But you turn off the volume on an MMA fight, right. it doesn't matter what language you speak, right. you get it. Two champions enter and, and, and someone's gonna win. That's the first barrier, is the language. The second barrier is cultural relevance. I love hockey, you know, born, raised in Canada, That's love hockey. That's my man. That's yes, I know uh, I like you, yes. You know, but Wayne Gretzky could walk down the street. Nobody would know who he is in Asia. And you could, doesn't matter how big that sport is, but most people have never even seen ice in Asia. Wow. Right? So Unless it's in their drink. <laughs> and even that, maybe <laughs> that's hard to come by. <laughs> and so the cultural relevance now, but you, you ask them to fall in love with mixed martial arts. Wow. They've seen martial arts every day on their television, in movies, in films, in music, in, 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 uh, in everything that they do. Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Bruce Lee. These are all icons that they already know, right? I mean, I would, I would venture to guess that if you were to ask any common guy on the street in Asia, do you know what Muay Thai is? He'll tell you. He'll tell you exactly. Muay Thai is the national sport of, of uh, Thailand. I've probably seen it, and they, they fight like this, blah, blah, blah. If you probably ask the average guy on the street here, he'd... He might think you're talking about a food dish, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. all those movie stars. The one you really forgot was Tony Ja. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's the man. <laughs> that guy is the man. If you haven't seen On Box, yeah. like, stop what you're doing with, right now. And with go, the fly Well, after the show. Oh, uh, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. But the well, you skipped Steven Seagal. He's oh, going to yeah. be here tonight. Uh, Chuck, uh, Norris? Uh, Chuck, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris, come on. Chuck, but Nor Chuck Lee's Norris is a, is a god. Jet you know Lee's that. He's favorite, not a real though. human being. Jet Li, Fist of Legend. Have you ever seen Fist of Legend? Fist of Legend is amazing. That's my, fav that's my favorite a, martial arts movie. Have you seen Ang Bak? Of course, all oh. three of them. But, but hey, hold on. The well, acting the, is different. I mean, uh, it's like, yeah, you know, it's one. I don't watch it Tony, for the acting. But Tony <laughs> Jaw, when it comes to that, isn't on the level of Jet Li. I don't watch it for the acting. Jet Li's fight scenes are way better than Ang Bak. Sorry. Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, listen to these two go out. It doesn't I don't take know. much. Hey, hey, hey. Victor, it does we not can, take much We to can get agree to disagree on this. But the, the good thing is, is, is when you talk about the uh, – that actually happened here when the UFC first was introduced. There mm -hmm. were traditional karate schools. Kung, all of these traditional schools – was it were against it and they didn't want their their exposed you know, ex yeah. exposed they, uh, that's yeah, exactly yeah. right and, and especially fred eddish when that happened with fred eddish i mean nobody really knows the whole story behind him only getting in there on two minutes notice but i mean he was a karate black belt that went in there and got absolutely decimated and it it killed karate for a little bit people were like wow karate means nothing yeah, yeah. so I, I can understand but eventually these schools have transformed and even we've talked about it tiger shulman karate it was one of the it's the largest chain in America, karate schools, and now it's Tiger Shulman MMA. Right. So you saw the transformation. There was, there was, uh, you know, a backing. They didn't want it. They, you know, a grudge at first, but now the transition's applied. Yeah. And, you know, that's just nothing but good news for Asia. H right how weird. well has, it ha has MMA been received in, like, the schools in Asia? Very good. Very, very positive. You know, you're seeing, you're seeing those changes, actually. I think three, four years ago, maybe in, like, for example, in Singapore, there was maybe one MMA gym or two MMA gyms. There's probably almost 20 right now in Singapore. Wow. You know, like you're talking exponential growth at the grassroot level of people that are, are falling in love with it. But also I think society is changing too in that, you know, maybe it's a shorter attention span or what, but, we, but people want, are joining these gyms and they don't want to just do boxing five days a week. You know, they want to be exposed to different martial arts. So I think the gyms have got to cater to that as well. I agree. Now, we have you on, and of course, naturally, from 1FC, but what are your thoughts on the upcoming Strike Force? Because I'm sure you follow some of the other organizations yeah, of course. that's happening tomorrow of course. night. I mean, the uh, last Strike Force card happening on Showtime tomorrow night. I mean, first and foremost, I'm an MMA fan, so I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll follow anything and everything wherever I can watch it. Um, like I said earlier, we talked about it. I'm a, of, of mixed emotions on it. I think uh, it was, it, maybe the reason why it's not so shocking is that it feels like it was inevitable. Like, I've right. been waiting for it for a l already. Like, it's not, oh, my God, oh, you know. It's, it's your aunt.
at all. And, you know, I, it had a, a depth in the roster, but it was an issue. And, you know, especially you saw it when main event gets canceled. We saw it with the UFC, and I think the UFC's realized now, hey, you just can't, you know, solely worry about the main event when we saw it with 151. But Strike Force, you had two cards canceled in a row because right. the main event, you know, was done, and there was, you know, no one's really going to watch it. But I think, I think tomorrow's night, tonight's car, uh, tomorrow night's card is going to be fun. And I think, it, you know, you talked about the under, like underdogs and how this is one of those, the, the lopsided. It is so lopsided. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. Like if you look at the books right now, it's crazy. And I, I'm pretty sure all except for one underdog, I'm, I'm not taking. I'm taking the, the favorites. What other dog are you taking? I think Ryan Couture is going to be able to put away oh, KJ yeah, Noons. Yeah, I, I think so. I think there was a blueprint established to beat KJ Noons by uh, George Moss at all. He's one of my favorite fighters. He has I don't think he's tapped into his potential yet. He let me down in that Melendez fight, yes, but I absolutely. love his style of boxing. He's long, good footwork, Game stiff break. jabs, straight punches down the pipe, no loopies. And in, in the sport of boxing, you know this, straight punches beat loopies. You know, mm -hmm. it's straight down the pipe, short and sweet, will always beat the, the, the overhands and the sloppy kind of loopy flailing hooks. Um, I think that George set, that, set the blueprint, how to, how to keep him at bay with that jab, snap his head back, and then you mix in that with the Josh Thompson fight. Blend in your takedowns off that. You know, he's going to try looping punches to get in, and, and after you snap his head back a couple times, he's either going to overcommit, which is going to open up a takedown, or he's going to start reacting to the straight punches, which is going to open up your takedown. So I think Ryan's got that, and I talked to his trainer, uh, uh, Tim Lane, a lot, and, and I think they have the, the game plan, the tools, and, and the style to, to pull out the W. Absolutely. I'm looking for, I, I think he wins that fight. I'm going to the bookie right after this. So <laughs> I, I personally feel there's a, hopefully there's a lot of surprises tomorrow night, and it's not as lopsided as everybody's saying it is. Well, Victor, we want to thank you so much for joining us. I know that you have to get to another media source uh, in the next couple of minutes. Thanks but, uh, so much. Wait, really but, quickly, tell everyone where they can watch the event on the second. Yeah. Uh, you can catch it. Um, if, if you're here in the States, it's probably best to go on oneofc.com and, and catch our live stream. Awesome. I yeah, suggest I everybody there. go. Yeah, everybody yeah, well, go check it out. Phil Baroni, middleweight champ this year. Come on, man. Make <laughs> it happen. I <laughs> love the NYBA. Yeah, I've been, I've, the reason why he's there, I've been a fan of him from the very beginning. You know? He is a showman. Yeah. Well, uh, I suggest, like I said, we're going to have so many people down here uh, tonight, and we are here hanging at the Ainsworth here, introducing New York City's Ainsworth. That's right, at the Hard Rock. Did you go uh, hang out at the Ainsworth when we were in New York City? No. You never went to the Ainsworth in New York City? Man, no. it's awesome. They had a happy hour. We have a happy hour here Monday through Friday, right? 8 to 11. 8 to 11. 8 to 11 happy hour. That's a three-hour happy hour. That's, that's, your, that's, that's your type, a, type of happy hour. Actually, <laughs> drinks and food. Tuesday night is karaoke over here. You know, Asians love karaoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Vegas' number one destination to watch sports event. Um, MMA Fight Corner sponsored by Fast Cash. Title owns with three great locations. It rates at 9.95%. How can you go wrong? Our competition tell you that it's half off, but half off of what? Our man Mike the Child will not be beat or undersold. Call Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell them that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. And, of course, naturally, I have to tell you about an amazing experience I had here in Las Vegas. I recently had LASIK procedure done to correct my vision. That's why I can see Joey so well. I can see the audience so well. I can see the Ainsworth sign and all the cool things up, uh, the, the chandeliers and everything. So uh, I'm telling you, if you want an amazing experience, go talk to Dr. Rothman and his staff. You will be glad you did. I know I was. I had an amazing experience. And if you want to get 50% 50, 50 off premium and LASIK, mention my name, Billy Mira, and get 0% financing available as well. Call 702-636-2010. You'd be delighted you did. I know I was. I can actually see you now. When we come back, Pat Barry's supposed to join us. We want to thank you so much, Victor. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. We're back after this. Hi, this is Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness. But I need to get my fill of MMA, man. I tune into the MMA Fight Corner. Rock and roll! The MMA Fight Corner. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Welcome back to the MMA no, you can't, on Pat. Fox Sports Radio 920. You are here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Vonner. And uh, I got to tell you, I'm really excited about our next guest, man. UFC heavyweight Pat Barry joins us, as well as Invicta FC straw rate, Rose Noma Yunus. Noma Yunus. Noma Yunus.
Yeah, you pronounced it right. I Nama got, Yunus. Nama Yunus, I got it correct. We want to thank you guys for... Uh, T- test your headset, Rose. Say hello, hello. We can't Hello, hear hello. You. Nothing on her, yeah, so we got to give her... Hello, no, hello. <laughs> Pat, you're going to have to do the post-fight interview style with this one. Shit, sorry. Uh, wait, I'm sorry. Now I, Pat's I, I, breaking I, everything. You don't, you don't send in a heavyweight to do small mechanical things. It just doesn't work. Uh, he loves her. Look, he takes care of her. He's the greatest cor- he is yeah, a, Aaron, he is We the can't greatest see them on the... Uh, ever. Oh, well, look. Greatest the corner my toenails, too. <laughs> he he painted his toenails? Yeah. Pa- you got skills? <laughs> Actually, Pat yeah. Barry now is hired as the tech on our show now. Hey, yo, you see the makeup? The hair? You, you uh, did that too? I even sewed the dress. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Rose, you guys look unbelievable tonight, and it's great that you're here in Vegas Thank you. at the World MMA Awards. And this is actually the first time that we've seen each other like dressed up. Really? Ever. Pat was telling me this before, and I didn't believe him. I thought, I, thought you said, just said I thought you said this is the first time we've seen each other dressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are freaky. <laughs> hey, Lithuanians live in the woods, man. They're, they're close. No, we've been together for quite some time, man, and this is the first time I've ever – I think this is the first time I've put a suit on since senior prom. 97. Wow. Yeah. Class of 97? Yeah. Class of 97. And you had some trouble finding the suit, didn't you? Yeah, I had a... Uh, because it was... I mean, we I had the fight, and after my fight, and everybody was happy, and then Rose just had her uh, pro debut on Saturday, just passed, and Invicta, where she got the submission of the night, and as soon as that happens, I get an email saying, hey, we'd like the two of you to come to the MMA Awards. Just saying. <laughs> Maybe you can bring Pat, too. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, after the day, uh, congratulations again on the win, though. After your debut last week, I don't know how many people know this, but Invicta 4 broke the Internet. It, it, oh, yeah. it straight up shut down the Internet for a little bit. With the, I think it was like 70,000 people were on at one time trying right. to order. It was insane. Uh, well worth it. Definitely well worth it, but your fight had, uh, I know, I had e- I've had easier times watching scrambled porn than your fight, but luckily <laughs> Shannon that. and everyone showed, every- showed the fight in full afterwards. Beautiful submission victory. Congratulations. And congratulations to you, too, on your win uh, a few weeks ago against Shane and the greatest post-fight speech ever. But, but you were amazing with that, dude. I know it was a tough day after, you know, what a, happened. It was, a, it was a tough few days. Uh, the whole event that went down... Uh, on, I mean, waking up to a text message like that and hearing, even though that didn't directly, like, have an effect on me because I just, no one was there for me, but just hearing that, all I wanted to do was just go home. I mean, I, I, told, I, I told everybody, like, I, if, if for some strange reason this fight gets canceled, I don't, I, I, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. I just, I just want to get home uh, as soon as I can. It, it was funny. Like, my dad, since I, we've moved out to Vegas, my dad's kind of been watching the sport more and more, and... We were actually on the phone with each other when your fight was on, and I was talking about what a nice guy you are. And he's just like, are you kidding me? Look at this guy. He's a nut. He's a madman. And he's like, I don't believe you. And then he heard your, your post fight. He's like, I'm a fan for life. You know, I've gotten uh, so much critique. Not, it's, not, it's, it's, it's bad critique, but not bad the way it, you, know, you think at first. But people are saying, hey, man, we're sick of your post fight speeches that Trump However, you just beat somebody. Like, we're, we're trying to enjoy your knockout, and as soon as you start talking, everybody forgets about the fight. I've gotten more fan mail based on what I said. No one's talking about, hey, good punch, but man, what you said afterwards well, just touched me. Not, not only good punch, but good job in the first round with your submission defense. Have yeah. you been helping him? We, see, <laughs> we need to say that again in slow motion. Just a yeah. little bit, but he taught me how to do the rear naked choke. So. Really, you've been, you looked really good on the ground. I told you, man, I'm, I'm, my, my, my uh, ground game isn't as horrible as the world may think. Um, it's just for a while, it, if, if you were 140 pounds or down, I'm actually pretty good. But uh, I'm getting, getting better rolling around with the big guys. It's actually kind of funny because his jujitsu is, he does it so wrong sometimes that it actually works. Like, like he'll actually give you an arm just so that he can just get on back on top so you know it's kind of interesting that way that's what uh, Angelo Dundee used to say about Muhammad Ali he said he's the only guy that is everything so wrong but it comes out so right that, right yes that's um like just how it's how it's been uh if you uh <laughs> I'm back on um just that's how it's been it's 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 there are, you either have to be completely great or you have to be completely horrible in order to be dangerous because I know guys who are so bad at, so bad at striking that they're they're, they're hard you one you can't hit them and two, they can they can hit you with things that you're not necessarily going to avoid because it's like, oh, 
that can't possibly hurt, but it'll blow your head off. Right. The one-two will not do anything to you, but if they go, ha, it's, you're dead. You're dead meat. I mean, you can be so bad that you can be dangerous. And my, my ground game has consisted of, I mean, everybody. It's not by the book. It's, 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 it's not. It, it's, it's by doing everything wrong that I've been able to get away with certain things. Like, I, I'm quoting people right and left, but Bruce Lee always said the two people you never want to fight is, is the inexperienced and the crazy because – you don't know where it's coming from because they don't know where it's coming from. Exactly. And that's why it's unpredictable. It's unpredictable fighting a guy like I mean, just, and Jacob Volkman. Jacob Volkman, uh, I swear, we've been there for almost two years now, training with him. No one he can is punch the funny this. He's the funniest person to watch shadow boxing. Like, <laughs> no, you can't <laughs> punch this guy in the head. You, you can't. It just can't be done. The only way you can be standing in front of you, the only way you can hit him is if like because he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna run into it. He's never gonna be where he where he's supposed to be. And I mean guys like that, guys like Pee Wee Herman. I mean guys like Joey Bellatran, who just never stopped coming at you. Like guys like that. Like those are the kind of people that they're, they're dangerous. They make awkwardness effective. Yep, and that's what I've told Rose. And like she said in her first what four fights or her first three of her three of her first four fights were with, against girls way out of her weight class. Like in her amateur fights is. Uh, she weighs in at 118. These girls weighed in at 130, 135, 140, 142. And she's like, I just, I can't stop them. And I, I'm better than this. And that's what I was telling in the beginning. I tell a lot of fighters this. The person standing across from you will determine how well, how good you do and how you right. look to the world. It's like if you punch pads with someone who can't hold pads, they can, I can make you look horrible no matter how good you are, how, how good your technique is. I can make you look really ugly if I hold the pads like that. Right. You know what I mean? And if, when people just run at you and just never stop and they never back off and they have all these awkward, they make you do awkward things, they'll make your fight really hard. It's like dancing. Yeah. You're coming out there to do a nice, like, you know, the, the, the salsa or something, and you got someone just kind of twitching and, and choking like the leg was broken. <laughs> the Humpty <laughs> Dance. <laughs> but, yeah, it's the same exact thing. So yep. what, what are you guys doing here tonight? And Are you presenting? You're just here. Uh, we're just here hanging up. <laughs> yeah, we just uh, we, we got the we got the invite yeah. to come on out. Um, so we. Well, you nominated, quick. aren't you nominated? No. Or something? no. I thought you were nominated. <laughs> <laughs> no nomination. None. You know what everybody's saying? Pat Barry should get nominated as the greatest comeback ever with his fight with Chet Congo. Yes, ever. Wait, I, right. I actually, I want to... And that fight was in 2011, <laughs> and I didn't even remember that we were in 2012. You, you, you told, uh, I think it was before, what was that, 141 was Brock and Alistair? Yeah. You were working with Brock, and I ran into you at the weigh-ins, or at the press conference, and I, I brought up the Chet Congo fight, and you said, Chuck, Chet Congo hit me so hard, he hurt my mother. Yeah. Now, I, I need you to explain this to our listeners because I thought this was one of the most amusing stories. I, I, I'm not really amusing when it happened. No, 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 but too now, late. You said it, Mom. I hope, it I, hope, yeah. I hope Mom heard that. Mom, his name is I don't want Mama Barry after me. I hope she heard that. Um, well, the first knockdown, you know, because I knocked him down twice, the first knockdown that hit him, uh, the whole everybody in my house, they, they start going crazy and jumping up and down. But then when the second knockdown hits him, and they thought the fight was going to be stopped, kind of like I did too. But my mom is jumping up and down. She lands wrong and tears her meniscus in her right knee. So when she lands funny from jumping up and down, she tears her knee, falls on the ground, and I'll give you a, a rendition of what it looked like. Go, Pat. Oh, ow, ow. ow. Oh, what happened? What happened? Is he celebrating? She completely missed the knockout. So she thought I was laying on the ground going, yeah. <laughs> but in all actuality, I was unconscious and she missed it because she right uh, the second knockdown because like five seconds after that, or 95 seconds, that's when he punched me in the back of my neck. Like, so uh, she falls on the ground, holds her knee, looks up at the TV screen, says, well, what happened? Looks back down at her knee, looks back up the screen. Her son has been knocked unconscious for the first time ever. It actually, it actually did, a, did her a favor then. Yeah, because that would probably, probably be more painful for a mom to watch, uh, you know, tearing her meniscus or seeing her baby boy get. You know, you know I, pff, my mom has been, my mom is a gangster since day one. Like she's seen, she's never seen me get completely like annihilated by somebody, but she's been there when I've lost fights. She's been there for the fights that I win, and every time she like she's not, my mom is not. Oh, you better stop. Like she's when are you going back to practice? What are you going to be working on? What are you going to? She asked me before every fight, what are you going to knock this guy out with? Like that's the, the, the key question before 100 kickboxing matches, 12 MMA fights. Like she's asked all the time, what are you going to knock this guy out with? I keep, so my, my my new response is I'm going to throw rows at him. 
<laughs> like that's the new one that I'm getting at. Well, how how important has that been in, in your? It's been it's been spectacular. Now I've got I've got family members just like the rest of the world does. Who they they? Hey man, when are you gonna get a real job and stop doing all that stupid fighting? Yeah, you know, like I've got. Of course, we've all got them. But to have a support system, like to have family members I and mean, people that are really close to you, like behind you all the way. Like that's 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 beyond that's beyond necessary. Like like Rose. Like this, I, I, one of the greatest things that's ever happened. It, the greatest part of my career ever has been being with Rose standing next, like right next to me. Like because she's she's there for me more than mom, more than anybody. She's the number one there. She's the first person I think about as I'm stepping in. The first person I'm thinking about as I'm getting punched. The first person I'm thinking about when I wake up. Like, like this is it's just all I'm asking for her advice, for tips. Just what does she think? I mean, she's helped me train so much. And then when she's training for her fights, just to be able to watch her go through all the ups and downs and all the roller coasters that the rest of the world has no idea about. They think they know. What, 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 the punching and kicking is easy. Right. That's the easy part. It's, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. That's, that's, the, that's the battle, the struggle, and just being able to see her go through what she's going through, I can, I'm figuring myself out like watching her because it's just right, it's right there 24 hours a day. Well, what was last weekend like with, in between rounds with you cornering her? I know there was, there was some pretty wild video of, of you like going absolutely ballistic. How, did, how were you in that position? Well, people are always surprised at the fact that we can separate our relationship in such a business-like manner, especially. I mean, he's pretty much like my coach, my boyfriend, my everything, like all at once. So it's kind of it's kind of a game that we have to play to try and separate each role at the right time. And there's a pl time and a place for everything. But, um, you know, I couldn't imagine being with somebody that didn't, I don't know, us as a fighter, um, as fighters, we kind of, we're different people. So I think we, us, both being fighters, we get to understand each other in a different way that, um, you know, it's really hard for other people to understand. Yeah, we're the same species, man. We speak the same language. We have the same, everything is the same. So we understand each other completely, like, in between rounds. And like you said, the separation between the, the romance and the relationship and, the, and what we are and then the job that needs to be done is there. I can be... I mean, it's, we haven't gotten to uh, we haven't gotten there yet. But look, but I, was, I can be. You're afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, where's the nomination for Power Couple MMA Power Couple of the Year award? It's got to right. go to you two. I, it's got to. I. It's got to. It's got yeah. to. Have you seen this dress? Uh, she does look very good. I sewed that myself. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing, man. Well, but, you you guys as a couple look very good together. It's nice to see both of you as fighters. You support each other, and uh, that's got to be an amazing thing. And no, his tie matches her dress. Like yeah. I just. I'm getting it. Oh, we well, didn't plan this. We you didn't plan, plan it. it. You, here I come. I planned the whole thing. Hey, you sewed the tie, too, yeah, huh? I planned the whole thing. This is part of the dress. This is the <laughs> it goes lower to the knees, but I made a tie out of it. Well, thank Listen, Pat and, and Rose, thanks so much for joining us. I know that you guys have to get out to Yeah, we're heading to source. wherever. Uh, where is that? Around Red the corner? Red carpet, make a left right here and keep walking down. And, uh, we'll when just follow the flashbulbs. The, yeah. Gotcha. All right, we'll, we'll see do that. Yeah. Well, that's that's the plan right now. We're gonna. I need a sign to say, "Look at her." Like, you guys gotta walk the red carpet. But then now. don't look at me. <laughs> look at I'm not, that's that's gonna be the all day. Hey, everybody, don't you take a picture of it? Don't you? Do I it. suggest yeah. everybody <laughs> come down to the Hard Rock and visit us at the Angel or the red carpet and see how handsome Pat Barry looks in his suit because you know he's not been in a suit for a while. I'm uncomfortable and I'm sweating. And <laughs> you need to follow these two on Twitter because the videos that he posts of the two of them are absolutely hilarious. Is there anything you guys want to push before you leave? Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, uh, Rose Namunas, Nama Junas, uh, and then uh, Invicta Fights is an awesome organization. Uh, InvictaFC.com, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah I, I thought I'd tell you, if you're not if you're not supporting Invicta, then you need to just yeah just get out of my face. Oh, like if you're not if you're not a part of that, Invicta, like the the shows, the everything that she's doing, the fact that the the fact that the stream exploded because too many people tried to buy it. That's like, awesome. That's it's awesome. bad, but it's, it's cool at the same not, time. Not only, I, when it happened, and Shannon came on and said that she was going to go ahead and refund everybody's money, I, I tweeted right back, don't even bother. Don't even. Don't, I don't, right. don't need the money. It, listen, I missed three fights. You put them up, and I got to see them, and the rest of the card was amazing, so it doesn't matter. And, and, and you know what? Two days later, right there in the bank, you, you put you, the money back. You know what? It's I just like it costs uh, how much a sandwich costs. I mean, yeah. Really, yeah. You, Meet well myself from it. Subway. But you know what? If, if breaking the Internet isn't a push <laughs> for you need to start going on TV and on pay-per-view, I don't know what it is. They broke, broke they, the Internet. They,
happy, but she she refunded everybody's money. Yeah. She put the rest out there for people to see for free. She stayed cool. She didn't break a sweat. I mean, she was just on it. Invicta is where it's at. Like, people need to give more more support, more high fives. Come to the crowds. There's not one boo in the crowd. Yeah, As a matter of fact, after you leave an Invicta people call, it, you need more. to go take a nap <laughs> because you're exhausted from Brand jumping up home. and down. Uh, she has spo- Brian Butler over at Sucker Punch Entertainment. is her first management. She has sponsors. Uh, down to script, Fear the Fighter, uh, Poly Polyammo. Ammo. Ammunition. Ammunition, I'm sorry. And horsepower. <laughs> horsepower with Matt Miller for getting all these strong and choke out muscles at the end of round three. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't look at it. I know. <laughs> don't Matt, I was looking this way when that happened. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't didn't know. see a thing. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You. Uh, but uh, John, just UFC, everybody, just everybody out there who's a uh, tag. Wait, 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 real quick, did we ride. touch upon the fact when is your next fight? You guys, when the plans for the next fight? Um. Uh, well, the next uh, Invicta card is April, and they seem to want me to have back, uh, have Beautiful. me back. So, all yeah. right, yeah, Rose, Excellent. rising star here, and Pat Barry. We really look forward to you fighting. I call it the Pat Barry effect. It yeah, happened right. again in your last fight. As as your fist hits their face. It's, it's, all, it's as as Pat as Barry as effect. As as you know what? No, Southpaw too. Southpaw. Southpaw South 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 and the big old man we left. We were talking about this upstairs. I mean, if you followed my track record in the UFC, it's win, lose, win, lose, win, lose, win, lose. I'm coming off of one hell of a win. I don't know if I want to have the next fight. Like <laughs> just make sure the fist hits the chin. Yeah. Right? It works every time. I see you do it. All right. Uh, he makes it sound so easy, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? Coach of the year right if here, If you would have just hit him. If you would have just knocked that dude out, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> you would have let him take it. What take a coach. No, no. I just say all he has to do is get the fist to the face. That's all and to do. That's all you have to do. So if everyone would just stand there and let me punch them, I think I could, <laughs> I could make a real big dent in this heavyweight division. <laughs> well, we look forward to your next fight. And a problem. Right, look, thanks so much for coming on the show and guys. joining us. Awesome. And I'm sure we'll see you later and we'll have a couple of drinks together. And yeah, you're right. I will not be looking <laughs> at Rose, Pat, I promise. Don't you do it. <laughs> no, really, look at it. You see it? Yeah, no, That was a test and you failed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I, I don't know. I guess uh, you could walk to the red carpet from here. Enjoy yourself. Right, Definitely you. have a good night. Thank right, you. Man. Or so you can guys. stay here. Look awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Thank you, Brad. Catch you on a bit. Now, I, uh, you know what I love the best about that? He said the last time you wore a suit was a, a prom. senior prom. You know, prom. for me it was something like last time I wore a suit was I had to go to court. <laughs> you know, he did <laughs> <near> court. <laughs> His court tickets. Here he goes. See? Right, cool, All right, Pat. Have a good you guys night. have a good night together. Yeah, that was really cool. I saw you looking, Billy. Why are you looking, oh, Billy? I looked, Pat, Pat, I, I, looked. I looked real quick. <laughs> looking. I was, but it's a quick one, Pat. If Pat's not going to give me the Pat Barry effect and knock me out. You know, though, Pat's 100% right about Invicta. People need to, need to continue to watch and support. Like, and, and that's another thing. You know, you talk about Strike Force. Women's MMA night, might not be where it is today without Strike Force. We had our very first five, five-minute round. Good point. You know, Gina, for Gina Carano and Cyborg headlining a show. You know, now we have it uh, UFC, what, was it 157 with Ronda Rousey headlining a show? Which no. a lot of people are very upset about. Are you upset about that, Joey? Uh, no, I'm, you know what? I'm not upset. It doesn't really. It doesn't affect me either way. I'm gonna watch the card. I'm a diehard. What I do think, though, and, and I'm not a promoter, so, but I, I just think that out of out of respect and the biggest draw on the card, in my opinion, is Hendo, former world champion, That's top ten best in the world, and Lauda Machida, former world champion. Top. I just think that. If I was a promoter and I'm looking at the two matchups, that matchup seems like the money fight. That seems like the big fight to make. But I know that they're trying to make a big push for the women's, and so that it's the sales tax. They're selling that. I think more people, as a fan, I think more people would buy a product being sold with Hendo, Hendo uh, Machida headlining than Rana. But time will tell. Right no, now, you, I don't think ticket sales are, 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 are you know, record-breaking. You are. Uh, it's a catch-22. You have uh, an historical first, which is women inside the, uh, the UFC octagon. Listen, there's a big difference between the strike force cage and the octagon. I mean, the UFC octagon is 30 by 30. Yeah, it's that, huge. That's, that's a big difference, okay? And I, I understand the significance, but you're 100% right with the – you have Dan Henderson, uh, former Pride middleweight champion – former uh, one UFC 17, a legend in this sport, facing a very tough test in Leota Machida, that would normally be the main event. And there's a lot of media and fans out there that are very upset with the decision. I mean, I don't know if you've seen, there's, a, there's actually like a, 
you know, fake reimaged posters going around. And you got yeah, Machida and Henderson. That. It's just the real main event. I'm not upset. I mean, it's really, I, I don't understand. I understand. It. I, I don't. What I don't understand is people getting upset. Like, oh, I can't believe this. Like, why do you care? It's it's the, it's the, it's the order. So you're still gonna get to see the fight. You know, it doesn't affect you anyway as a fan. One one effect is that if it was the main event title or not, it would have been five rounds. Ah, that good, I that I think could point. be could be what's bothering good most point. people. Good point. Very good. You know. So and, and uh, we'll see though. I, I'm looking uh, forward to I, it. I'll tell you what. There is a lot of pressure on Ronda Rousey for this. Not only is she main eventing, but she's main eventing by, against someone that she is supposed to on paper dominate, just destroy. And it's like, it's hard. It's like it's like the movie everyone goes tells you about. You gotta see this movie. It's the best movie ever. Oh my god, this is the best movie ever. And then you go see, and you're like, yeah, that was alright. I don't think you know. It's like, is the hype being built up so high that everyone's just getting set up for to be let down? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it may it may happen. Um, Billy will never say that that'll happen. He's going to say that Ronda's going to coast. Billy's, Ronda. Like, Billy's it, not even allowed to go to the event because the restraining <laughs> order she has against no, him. No, actually, he ran into her outside, and I'm we surprised nice, she remembered him. Yeah. She didn't run away she, from him. She didn't run away and knew who he was. That's she said, right. do, you, do you remember last year? Because when Billy met Ronda last year, it was actually at the MMA Awards, and Billy had a front row ticket next to Ronda Rousey. But no, her, they, they placed me there. Because, you know, he, seat wait, I had tickets to that. Who, so, so, who hooked it up? No, the thing was, is right next to Ronda was, was Anderson Silva. And Ro Ronda was kind of intimidated. So she asked Billy to sit a little in between. Intimidated. So we sat there. We walked up. And she said to me, do Ronda me wanted a Billy sandwich with yeah, Anderson. Yeah, a little Billy sandwich. And she said, you sit next to Anderson Silva. I don't want to sit next to him. And Billy's so. like, Anderson who? <laughs> Anderson <laughs> I, my, Cooper? <laughs> would, would you stop? <laughs> Come it's on, not that crazy. We did have a nice conversation. It was good to run into her, especially with how far she's come since the World MMA Awards Absolutely. in 2011. Uh, like I said, but you know what? It's amazing because I see her name all over. We are here at the 2000, uh, 2000 what is it, 2012, 2013? It's the 2012. 2012 uh, MMA Awards here. And some of the nominees, we haven't even read this, gone over this real quick. You have Charles Mass Lewis, Fighter of the Year. You have... Uh, Daniel Cormier is a nominee, Nate Diaz, Benson Henderson, John Jones, and Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is nominated for Best Female Fighter, fighter of the Year. Fighter. Female, Female fighter, fighter of the Year. She's and also in Breakthrough Fighter of the Year. She's, I mean, in a ton of categories she, she here. She could clean up this year. She could clean up. She could. <laughs> And you don't any think prediction? So, huh? Any predictions? Who, who, if, we, if we go through hey, this, we're usually good at doing this. What are our odds? You don't, odds you don't want me predicting. Because you know all the answers, probably. <laughs> oh, that's right. Joey works the awards. Joey is our very own Joey Vonner is working the World MMA Awards here at the Hard Rock tonight. And uh, thankfully sat down next to us and graced us with his presence. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm the one who's been blessed and graced by the presence of you two. And it's true. I can't say when you're right, you're right. And I want to say, you know what? We also have uh, some people here at the Ainsworth that, um, real quick, you know, we have a, um, a waitress Joy, who said she wanted to have her name. Get over here, Joy. Sit down. We're going to make Joy a fighter, female fighter. Yeah, she, judging by her nickname, I think she could scrap. Yeah. Sit down, Joy. <laughs> All right. Now, you said you wanted a nickname. Yeah. She, what was the nickname? Put the headset on right Put the now. headset on, Joy. What was the nickname that you, uh, you volunteered for yourself? Put the other headset on. You broke oh, that one. Oh, the other one. one. Jeez, you're such a badass. You broke that one. We, Pat Barry left our, our new tech. Okay, Every now so your your nickname, by the way, badass. Okay, <laughs> you be, that, 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 that's a lot of pressure on your shoulders. Like you gotta deliver. You got the look. I'll give you that. The tattooed up, you know, little hairstyle, you know, doing the thing with the tattoo with the earring on the eye. One is that an eye ring then? If yeah. it's an earring next to your eye, is it it's an eye ring? Dermal. The well, joy, a dermal. I think we call it. I think badass is her new nickname. Boom. I think the vote is unanimous yeah. here at the Come Angel down and the see Hard her. Rock. <laughs> Come down and see her. She works here with everybody else that works here. Great, great place. I'm sure you're going to run it. I'm telling you, people, do not miss this. Fighters galore. Fighters, Fighters galore tonight. <laughs> Fighters galore. It's going to be awesome. No, it is an MMA fan's wet dream here. It, it is. is. The, it the is. amount of superstars and fighters that are here and big names in the industry, it's, it's, it's awesome. Get yeah. down to the hard rock right now. We want now. to thank Vic Dequee for joining us. We want to thank Pat Barry, Rose, and we want to thank you, Joy, because it really is all about you tonight. It really is. <laughs> not the World MMA Awards, not the Strike Force card happening tomorrow night. It's my pants. It is about you and your pants. 
And we want to thank you, the Fight Fan, for your exclusive, exclusive interviews and MMA information. Go to MMAFightCorner.com and join us right back here next week. <laughs>